Charnel House of the Moon by Thomas Ligotti Read by Jeff Clark Transfixed hilarity was his first but certainly not his only reaction when from a hidden bed of shadows he gazed upon the place and its curious workings. He had journeyed too long to this fairy tale land to be sated by that feeling alone. Many more novel sensations were promised to one whose degenerate sensibility led him from moon to crystal-dusted moon until he reached that fleshy mound which stood out from the void like a chunk of bloody meat among a sprinkling of diamonds. It was just as the thin voices told him. There he strolled as through a rainbow splashed with all the shades of open wounds dripping with radiance against the blackness beyond the footlights of autopsies. With little skips he leapt over streams, open veins that flowed so slowly yet chuckled withal. Their waters were viscous, perhaps overly so for him to take refreshment from them, but he could let that go for now. He was allowing himself to get sidetracked on the way to his ultimate destination, and there it was the distinguished thing. It seemed no more than a big box of boards soaring like a mountain with black clouds roiling about its summit. At its base it was cheaply buttressed by long planks that leaned against wooden walls like resting watchmen. He entered unseen amid darkness and confusion and the sounds of labor. To put it plainly, the place was everything he was told it would be. A visionary slaughterhouse, its imagery taken from a book of morbid myths and legends. And it was then that transfixed hilarity began to overtake him. Held within wired corrals, the beasts stood uniformly docile and made no audible sounds. To his hearing, however, their very silence seemed a kind of music a sterile harmony as pure as the whiteness of their hides and their immaculate manes, and they all remained without the least spattering from the gloomy filth that seemed to be everywhere, even rising from the ground as a dirty gray steam, foul ghosts floating along the floor. Marauding through the greasy haze were huge men clad in nothing but long black rubbery aprons. Their faces were bestial, and they moved with plodding deliberation. Still, the pristinely pale creatures obeyed them without a struggle, glancing shyly when the gory mallet came down and smashed them between the eyes, right below the spot where a spiraled horn projected from their foreheads. The gods, he imagined, had no uncertain use for such well-formed cornua. Without delay, the butchers separated these appendages from the fallen carcasses. They snapped off easily, like icicles. He then watched the flaying of the flesh and the hanging of the coats along the walls. What royal robes they would make! And the animals' meat was as perfectly pink as their outer coverings were white. This was the ideal fare for one not accustomed to gross nourishment. Oh, where among the moons of the universe were they bound? But what a scandal the way the processing was handled, the way grappling hooks came down from high above and brusquely lifted the carnal heaps into the blackness. Was there even a roof to this coliseum of carnage? Or did the eye gaze upwards to see deep into the well of the abyss? His fair eyelashes fluttered with dreams and curiosity. Then his reverie was brought to an end, crudely interrupted, and transfixed hilarity, leaping toward hysteria, was but a fraction of what he felt. Well now, what have we got here, brothers? said one of the big boys in a black apron, massaging his thick and grizzled cheeks in a parody of thoughtfulness. The others gathered around some carrying monstrous mallets and others caressing the blades of sharp instruments. They sniggered unambiguously. They nodded. They whispered among themselves. And finally he realized the sort of place he was in. This was no citadel from a fairy tale for the depraved where he would be welcomed with hearty laughter. 
nor a fastness of shared indulgence and degradation. Now he knew what was going to happen to him. The massive figures hefted their tools, closing in, and he laughed a little, for at that moment transfixed hilarity was not entirely absent from his perception of this pageant and the featured role he was about to play.